Now, now you'll be able to understand these verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Turn, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, okay? Because Paul is addressing these groups of people that are confused about where they are in this whole thing, okay? Because they still don't know. So Paul is going to tie up some loose ends. Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 18, and Paul says, Is any man called being circumcised? You part of the little flock? Let him not become uncircumcised. Don't seek to become part of the body of Christ. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Don't you think you, you got called in uncircumcised? You're an uncircumcised Gentile. Don't think you're going to the little flock. Verse 19, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. But, the command, but keeping the commandments of God. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. You say you're of Paulus? You say you're of Peter? You say you're of Christ? Stay. You're called in circumcision? Stay there. You say you're of Paul? You're called in uncircumcision? Justified by faith? You stay there. See that? That those verses that never made sense to you before, all of a sudden, <coughs> they have a meaning now in the context of of the prevailing conditions that existed when this epistle was written. Okay? Now, this period of time in the Word of God, these 20 years or so, have a name that's assigned to it. In the Scripture. We don't frequently hear about this, but it's in the Bible. So we have to look at it. Because if it's in the Word of God, I don't want to ignore it. That's not right. Okay. So in Acts chapter 13, if you want to follow along with this. In Acts chapter 13, <coughs> notice verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Notice those words, the work. There is a time period in Paul's life called the work. It's not the work of the gospel of the grace of God. It's, a, it's something that's happening at this time during these days. Notice in Acts chapter 13, down at verse 38. Paul, after preaching a great message, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Now he's talking about Hosea. Behold ye despisers, and wonder, and perish, for I work a work. Paul was called to the work, right? I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. There's a period of time called the work. Now we've never heard about that before. You're hearing about it now. The work. Now I want to see, I want you to see this work in Romans chapter 9. So I'll turn over to Romans chapter 9. <clears throat> because the reason that we're looking at all these subjects that we've been looking at for the past four years is because they happen, Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11 are speaking specifically about these period, this period of time. 
Remember I mentioned when we get Romans 9, 10, 11, it's not talking about in the latter days of the dispensation of grace that we live in today. It's talking about the very beginning of the dispensation of grace during that time when these things are very confusing to most people. Right? Well, that's, what, that's what Romans 9, 10, 11 brings you back into that time. So notice in Romans chapter 9, verse 27, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Notice, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth, not a long work. There is a work in the word of God that is a short work and it's the work between Acts 13 and Acts 19. This is not something that is going to last throughout the entirety of the dispensation of the grace of God. It's something that will be here for a short while during that period of time that Paul is tying up these loose ends with these people, these stragglers that have littered the wilderness of, of, Israel, of, of, the, of that whole land over there. Notice in 1 Corinthians, notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, okay? Now I'm just giving a broad picture today of this subject. Just giving a broad picture of this, okay? But notice... Notice this, okay, Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 talks about, you know, chapter uh, 15, verses 1 through 4, the, the gospel, right? The gospel, whereby you are saved. And then note, go down to verse 9, he, Paul says, For I am the least of, of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. You know what the church of God is? The church of God... Think about this. Before Paul was saved, who did he persecute? The little flock, right? What are they called? Church. The church of God. That's what they're called. They're called the church of God. Okay? Now I'm going to put a stick in the spokes for you. Who's this letter addressed to? <laughs> Let's go look. Well, let's go look. Chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, who was the chief ruler of the synagogue at Corinth, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, unto the church of God. Who's that? Maybe that will help you understand this verse in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for, you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Where did Paul write unto the little flock? And why would he have written to the little flock? Well, we just read in 1 Corinthians, he wrote to the church of God, which is the church Paul persecuted before he was saved. So how and why would he have written to them? Well, they don't know who they are. They don't know who they belong to. He's got to fix this. Part of his early ministry was unraveling and tying up the loose ends of these people who so many things had happened. Who else can come and fix it but the apostle to the Gentiles? And look, in 1 Corinthians 15, I hope you, didn't, you kept your finger there. Okay, watch this, because this is amazing. You'll understand something right now. This is amazing. You'll understand something right now. Okay. And it's about the gospel of God. Notice, okay, verse 9. For I am the least of, of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. I persecuted the little flock. I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle. 
But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Notice this verse, verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so ye believed. What does that mean? Whether it be I or they. Notice in 1 Corinthians, now keep your finger here. Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, again. Okay, now watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ, they've been separated unto Christ, Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Both theirs, the little flock, and ours. He says, I'm talking to all the people who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. At this point, during this time of period called the work. Because they're, they're confused about who and where they belong to. So Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm sorry, 15, verse 11, Therefore, whether it were I, Paul, or they, Peter or Apollos, so we preach. What do we preach? Well, if I preach the gospel of God, and I put the gospel of Christ, of justification in there, you believed. But if Peter preached the gospel of God, and he inserted the gospel of the kingdom in there, that's the gospel of the circumcision, you believed. Now, if you're called in circumcision, that's where you're staying. If you're called in uncircumcision, that's where you're staying. That's one of the reasons for 1st and 2nd Corinthians is to tie up these loose ends in that period of time Paul calls the work. Now, throughout all of this that I'm saying right now, I want everybody to remember, I want everybody to remember this. Brother Rodney made it very clear that Paul was the first member of the body of Christ. That Paul, the church started with Paul in Acts chapter 9. That Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. But in the early days of his ministry, it's to the Jew first and also to the Greek. During a period of time that he calls in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, notice 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Notice he calls this time a very special time. It's not just called the work. Notice 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. For though I preach the gospel. What gospel? Ah, see? Now, let's be true. Let's be true. Let's be honest. Okay, follow this. Acts chapter 20, verse 24 is where Paul, for the first time in his life, says that he ministers the gospel of the grace of God. The gospel, that's after this. After this. Okay? Now, he says, look at verse 17, For if I do this thing willfully, willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. This time frame between Acts 13 and Acts 19, called the work, is also called a dispensation of the gospel. Where in that dispensation of the gospel, the gospel of God, the pie crust, depending on who preached it. So here's something you can think about. When those Jews and those Greeks were kicked out of their synagogues, the Jews were circumcised. They would listen to Peter preach the gospel of God with the gospel of the kingdom, and they, that would be the gospel of the circumcision, and they would go there. But those Greeks, they were Gentiles. They, at that time, 
would hear gospel of God from Paul with the gospel of Christ, the gospel of justification by faith put into it, equaling the gospel of salvation by faith, they were called in uncircumcision. So that's another word or another title for this time frame very early in Paul's ministry during a period of time when the and, and, and it's and, and here's the thing okay in those early days the body of Christ is in embryonic form it's in the pro, it's in the process of developing but it's not recognizable as a visible entity like we are sitting right here today. Loose ends. What I mean by loose ends is these people. I'm a Paul. I'm a Paulus. I'm a Cephas. I'm of Christ. During that period of confusion and time in the world, from Acts 13 to Acts 19, called the work. Some of them thought they could shift over from one to the other. Oh, I like this one better. Whoa, 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 whoa. Paul go, no, 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 no. No. No, you're not going to do that. See, Paul is the one who comes and he holds up his head. Whoa. No, you're not going to do that. Okay? You're in the little flock. You're staying in the little flock. You heard the gospel of God and I, I put justification by faith in there. You're a member of the body of Christ. And there was that period of time very confusing for everybody that somebody needed to come and straighten that mess out and separate everybody. Okay? And then you can under, you can, you can, now, next week, my goal, hopefully, is to go even further into our understanding in 1 Corinthians and go, see, that was written to Apollos and his group. See, that was written to the little flock. See, that's written to you. You have to rightly divide Paul's epistles too. You don't just rightly divide the word of truth. You got at this point in his life, in the early days of his ministry, uh, if you don't rightly divide Paul's epistles, you can't really understand. You can't really understand what's going on. But if you do rightly divide, even rightly divide Paul's epistles, there is truth that just comes out of there. Does that make sense? So. But this problem only lasted a short time. What did he mean? It's 917. When he says that if he does it willingly, he has, it's a, he has a reward. Yeah. Unwillingly. What does he mean by unwillingly? Then the dispensation of the gospel is committed unto him. But if against my will. I'm not exactly sure how that applies, but I can tell you that as the apostle to the Gentiles... As the apostle who has a commission that he's given to him, it seems like he's got to do something now that's like, well, wait a minute, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Right? I'm, I mean, that's a good question. The question was asked, by the way, verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 9, if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will... A dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. I don't have a choice. I mean, what is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. Now, in this here, where he says I, that I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, in 1 Corinthians 15, you look at that, in 1 Corinthians 15, he had said, um, in verse 10, 1 Corinthians verse 10, 15, 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly. I labored. He literally worked with his hands. Okay, he didn't labor harder so they understand, get saved. He labored with his hands. And then over here in chapter 9, verse 18, I preach the gospel that I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. He labored so that he did, they didn't have to give him money or whatever. So, anyway, you know, I wanted to give a, broad, a broader view of Paul's early ministry, his early days. I mean, things in 1 Corinthians have always like, wait a minute. 
you know, he's not writing this to me as a member of the body of Christ here, you know. So next week, I want to go back into 1 Corinthians and even examine further what he was doing, what he was saying, and how that this confusion that they had needs to be addressed and loose ends tied up to the point where he says, ah, you're not coming from there and you're not coming from there, you're staying where you are. And only the apostle to the Gentiles who had witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself or he saw Jesus Christ himself, I should say. He didn't witness the resurrection. All right, so anyway, I have to stop because we're way over time. All right? So let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, I, do, I thank you for this time that we can spend in the Word of God examining a very complex area and time frame in the Word of God. The early years of Paul in his early ministry to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I pray that some understanding can come to us as a result of looking at these subjects today. I pray that if anyone doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that today they'll bow their heart, acknowledge their guilt as a sinner before God, and believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and by faith in that, that His blood is adequate and sufficient to forgive them of all their sins, I pray that they will believe that Jesus Christ did that for them personally and that they will apply that truth to their lives. I pray these things in that name that is above every name, the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.